In this video, we're going to review common landmarks that we encounter in physical examination and osteopathic structural examination. As I'm going through this demonstration, I'm going to be feeling a few different areas from your head, along your chest and back, down by your pelvis, and also uh, your legs all the way down to your feet. If you're uncomfortable at any point, let me know. If you feel any tenderness or if you need me to stop, uh, please let me know. Is it okay if I begin? Absolutely. All right. So can you turn around and face away? Great. So starting posteriorly, we're going to start at the occiput so we can follow the neck superiorly, use one hand to stabilize, and then find the base of the head, base of the skull, and that is the occipital bone. Following from the midline superiorly, we can find the external occipital protuberance, and then we can move laterally to the temporal bones. Can you turn your head to the right? We can feel the temporal bones around the ear and then move along the posterior aspect of the temporal bone and then move inferiorly and feel the mastoid process where the temporal bone ends. We can also move a little bit anterior just under the ear and then find the posterior aspect of the mandible and then move down to the mandibular angle. Now turn your head forward. Now coming back to the midline, we can push along the cervical spine and find the spinous processes. We can feel the spinous processes pretty clearly and we're going to follow down until we find a C7, which is also the most prominent um, spinous process called a vertebra prominence. And we can also have our patient bend their head forward to accentuate that. And we can see and then feel it. And that's helpful to find then T1 underneath and come back up. And then we can move laterally and find the trapezius muscle. And then as we start moving lateral on that trapezius muscle, we can also feel this bony prominence. That's a superior aspect of the uh, scapula. And then try to find the part that sticks out the most, and that's the most prominent, and that is the spine of the scapula. Then we can trace that medially and find the medial border of the scapula. We can trace that medial border inferiorly until we find the inferior angle of the scapula. And then we can hook underneath that, hook around that to find the lateral margin of the scapula. And then coming back uh, to the midline and back up to vertebra prominence, we can move inferiorly and feel the spinous processes of T1 and down. then reaching the lumbar spine. And then as we reach the end of the lumbar spine, we'll reach the base of the sacrum, which is the most superior aspect of the sacrum. And then we can move lateral to find the iliac crest. So we can find the iliac crest by searching for the soft space between the bottom of the ribs and the pelvis, and then rolling our hands into that space and pushing down to find the iliac crest. We can then trace back along the iliac crest back towards the sacral base and find the prominences of the posterior superior iliac spine. We can try to hook underneath them or just appreciate where they are. And then we can move down to the ischial tuberosities. So now we're going to be entering a more sensitive area at the bottom of the pelvis. So we want to be clear with our patient on where we're going to be contacting. I'm going to be pushing on the, that bone on the bottom of your pelvis, the bone that you sit on. I'm going to be pushing first on the back of your thigh, on your hamstring, and then working my way up, okay? okay. Let me know if you're uncomfortable. So starting from the hamstring or the mid thigh posteriorly, you can then trace up and find where the hamstring inserts into the ischial tuberosity. And that'll be at that horizontal crease of the buttock inferiorly. And then you can find that bony prominence on both sides. And then we can move laterally to find the greater trochanter. So again, starting at the lateral hip, we can move inferiorly and then we'll feel the greater trochanter is poking out on either side. If you're having trouble finding the greater trochanter, you can also have your patient uh, lift an internal and external rotate that hip. So go ahead and swing it out and in, and you can feel it as it moves in space. All right, and you can leave it there. And then we can use our hands and again roll on top so to feel the superior border of them, and then move down along the lateral aspect along the iliotibial band until we find the lateral aspect of the knee. We'll find the lateral epicondyle of the femur on both sides. We can also feel the medial epicondyle of the femur. And then we can feel the popliteal fossa on both sides and we can ask our patient to bend their knee slightly so we can feel that space behind their knee that's created by the hamstrings and the gastroc nemius insertions. 
and then straighten your leg. We can then move inferiorly to the gastrocnemius and find the Achilles tendon, and we'll feel that taut band-like feel of the Achilles tendon, and then we'll follow that inferiorly until we feel the bony prominence of the calcaneus. From there, we can move to the medial aspect of the ankle and find the medial malleolus. We can feel underneath, lateral, and superior to it. And then we can feel the lateral malleolus, which is on the lateral aspect of the ankle. Can you turn around for me? So from that lateral malleolus, and we'll switch legs here to the right side, we can then move to the dorsum of the foot, palpate the bones in that area, and then move from the lateral malleolus superiorly along the fibula until we reach the fibular head, which is on that lateral aspect of the knee. We can then move medially to find the tibia and come along the tibia superiorly until we reach the tibial tuberosity. We can then continue superiorly and find the patella, and we can feel the lateral margins. We can feel underneath and superior. We can also glide it uh, medial and lateral to feel the edges of it. And then we can continue superiorly to the anterior pelvis. So now coming back to the iliac crest, again, that soft space between the ribs and the pelvis, pushing down, and then we can move anteriorly until we feel the anterior superior iliac spines, which, which is very prominent in the lateral uh, aspect of the inguinal area. We can fall off of that to the medial aspect. We can hook underneath to feel the borders of that anterior superior iliac spine. And then we can also follow along the inguinal crease towards the pubic tubercles. So again, we're approaching a sensitive area, so we're gonna to wanna to be clear with our patient on where we're gonna be pushing. So I'm gonna be pushing on that bone in the front of your pelvis and the pubic bone, um, kind of in, your, in the area of your bladder. Uh, let me know if you're uncomfortable uh, or if you need me to stop or if I miss it for some reason. Okay. okay. So now, again, from the ASIS, moving medial, you can move medial, push posteriorly, and then slowly move inferiorly until you feel the pubic bone underneath your fingers and try to land on the superior aspect of the pubic tubercles. If you're having difficulty finding that area and if you are concerned that you might miss that area and enter a, a more sensitive space, you can also have your patient find that area for you. So go ahead and push on that bone right there. Great. And then I'm just going to replace your fingers here. Great. So then moving more medially, we can find the pubic symphysis in the middle. This can often be a, a tender area, so we want to be cautious with how we make contact. Moving directly superior, we can find the umbilicus at the midline of the abdomen. And then continuing superior from there, we can find the xiphoid process. So starting from the inferior margin of the ribs, so if we move from the abdomen laterally and we find the ribs laterally, we can then track that superiorly until we fall right underneath that midline and we can push superiorly to feel the tip of the xiphoid process. Then we can continue along the midline to feel the body of the sternum. Then continue superior to that to feel the manubrium, which is the top of the sternum. And then feel the suprasternal notch or the jugular notch at the very superior aspect. Now, returning back to the sternum, we can also feel the ribs on either side. Now, again, when contacting the sternum and then contacting laterally, uh, for many patients, this is a sensitive area, so we, we want to make sure that we are clear with, with our contact and give patients options for how they want, might want to move their chest soft tissue out of the way. So I'm going to be pushing a little bit uh, to the side here uh, in your chest area to feel your ribs. Um, let me know if you're uncomfortable or if anything is tender. If you want to move your chest, uh, your chest out of the way, feel free to put your hand in the way and, and move things to the side, okay? okay? All right, so pushing on the lateral aspect of the sternum, you can feel each of the ribs as it comes off of the sternum. You can trace that down all the way to the inferior margin of the ribs again, and then move laterally until you feel, you might feel, uh, ribs 11 and 12 as they poke laterally and posteriorly on the sides. Then you can come back up to the suprasternal notch. And then from the suprasternal notch, we can move superiorly and then palpate the larynx and glide it from side to side. And then come back to the suprasternal notch and then feel laterally to the 
sternoclavicular joint. And that joint you can feel uh, pretty readily, but if you're having trouble feeling it, you can use one hand to feel that joint and then use the other hand to passively uh, flex and extend the arm and you might feel a little bit of movement in that space. You can then trace laterally along the clavicle, feeling the flat and round parts of the clavicle until it reaches the acromioclavicular joint where the clavicle then meets the acromion, that flat part of the acromion. Now, if you're having trouble finding that joint, the acromioclavicular joint, you can also again palpate that joint line or what you think is the joint line and then passively flex and extend that shoulder to feel any motion that might be present. So coming back medially along the clavicle, about halfway, we can move inferior to the clavicle to find the coracoid process, which is the anterior aspect of the scapula. Then moving back to the acromion, feeling that flat surface of the acromion. We could also trace back from the acromion along the spine of the scapula. Then moving laterally, dropping off the acromion, we can then feel the humerus deep to the deltoid muscle. And then from there, we can move inferiorly to the lateral aspect of the elbow and feel the lateral epicondyle. We can also in the medial aspect feel the medial epicondyle. Medial to that and along the midline of the arm we can also feel the cubital fossa or anticubital fossa. We can have our patient either passively or actively flex their arm so that we can feel that space. And then we can move back posteriorly and then feel the olecranon process. Again, passively or actively flexing the elbow so that we can feel the borders of that olecranon process. Moving again to the lateral aspect, to the lateral epicondyle, we can then move slightly distal and anterior to try to feel the lateral aspect of the radial head. And if we have trouble finding that radial head, we can also supinate and pronate the patient's forearm, and we might feel that radial head rolling within the annular ligament on the lateral aspect of the arm. We can then trace along the ulna posteriorly until we reach the wrist and feel the ulnar styloid on the medial aspect and then the radial styloid on the lateral aspect. We can pronate the wrist and then feel the carpal bones of the wrist, then the metacarpals until we reach the metacarpal phalangeal joints. We can flex and extend each joint there and then continue down until we feel the interphalangeal joints in each finger.